Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode two of the Nordic Puko Knife Build Series. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial series that's meant to help you build a Nordic knife. This is a pretty simple knife to build, especially if it's one of your first projects. Anyhow, this video right here is gonna focus on claying the back of the knife and a new heat treatment process that I've kind of morphed into doing to try to get the hamon to pop out on 1084. And just a sneak preview, guys, it works great. Wait till you see the hamon on this knife. So here we go. Let's uh, go ahead and put my maker's mark in this bad boy. And boom. Nice and hard. Perfect. So I'm going to have to sand that when I'm done because that marred it up just a little bit. But we got a good punch on the maker's mark and it didn't jump. That's a nice, that's a nice deep maker's mark right there. Perfect. Look at that. Excellent. Now you'll notice that my bevel goes right into the tang. The guard that I fit on this is going to be different because I'll have to take into consideration the tang is or the uh, blade is tapered right into the tang, so the guard will have to be tapered on the front also. That's going to be interesting. I've never done that before. Something new for this build. Let's go ahead and clay this bad boy up so it can dry overnight and I can heat treat it tomorrow. Grab my bag of satanite. I have this double bag with desiccant so that it does not set up from ambient moisture in the air. It doesn't take a lot to do this I've found, but I always like to mix up enough to do the trick. I'm going to make this one pretty thick actually. Desiccant back in there. Excuse me. Okay. And now we have water. Just a touch. It's probably enough right there. Quite enough. And that was almost too much. But it looks good. You want it to be real thick. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Mix it together as Nice and uniform as you can, work the lumps out of it. Alright, there we go. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to run it thick right down the spine.
All right, guys, I'm all set up here. I am going to do something a little bit different this time. I've got a tube that I'm going to install in my forge after I get it lit, and this is going to keep the direct flame off of the blade so I can bring the blade up to temperature slower and more evenly. And I'm also going to do a rapid water quench and then into oil, which hopefully will help bring out that hamon a little bit. So we'll see if these things add up to success. density of how thick I made that clay. Now this is still in experimentation for me. You know, I don't know if this is thick enough or if I need to go thicker. But it looks pretty good. We'll see. You know, I've got some cool stuff coming down on the blade. Hopefully we can see it. The idea is to heat this to non-magnetic, the edge part. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to very quickly dunk it in water and then move it over to the oil to finish the quench. I'm going to go ahead and back the camera up so you can see all the different stations, the water and the quench tank, and we'll go from there. I've got my water bucket here, I've got my oil here, so I've got my magnet right here. I'll bring out my blade, I'll test it on my magnet. When I reach non magnetic, I'll make sure the whole blade's good. I'll pull it, I'll go bing boom, as fast as I can, we'll see. as if we have success. At least you can see the quench line pretty evidently from where the clay was. The question will be whether or not we see it after we finish polishing it. So let's go ahead and throw it in a temper cycle. I'm going to do uh, 400 for two hours, cool it off and do 400 for another two hours. I've got a piece of 304 stainless here. I'm going to go ahead and use that for the guard on this Puko knife. I just went ahead and marked off a small section here that I'm going to cut with my trusty four and a half inch angle grinder. Square this up on the grinder real quick. Just another quick tip. Whenever I cut a piece of stock off of something like this, uh, you always have a jagged edge. Never take this and throw it back into your stockpile as is. This will bite you later. Always take the second it takes to clean up that edge before you go to store it. Now you can throw it in the drawer. Next time you reach in there without a glove on, you won't come out with a bloody finger. Puko knife. Now, this knife is interesting in the fact that what I've done is I've taken this bevel right into the tang. Okay, now you'll notice that this bevel comes right into the tang past the guard 
and then I ground even more off right here so it won't interfere with the guard fit as I slide it up the tang. Normally on a tang like this, right about here, you would start to taper the tang back. So I did that from the top, this flat. I tapered the tang back so the tang is actually thinner here than it is right here. But what I also did is I tapered the tang on this bevel towards the back so you could see it's thicker here and thinner here. That way when I slide this guard on, I'm not expanding the material of the guard out before it reaches its final destination. Now, to get this portion of the guard fit up, I'm not gonna be able to just mill a simple slot. I can mill a slot from here to here on the, on the milling machine that will be um, close to uh, the ending thickness for the, the normal slot. But for the tapered slot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the smallest dimension, which would be right here, and I'm gonna choose an end mill of just slightly smaller than that, and I'll mill a slot, and then I'll just come in and I'll file the taper in to meet from this point to right here uh, on the larger slot. I'll show you what that looks like. So here's my piece right here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run a halfway mark. Um, do, 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 do. Right there, that's gonna be halfway. So basically I'm just gonna mark myself out a halfway mark right there. Okay, got a couple parallel lines there. For this portion, I can use a scribe because it doesn't really have to be measured. Ultimately, this guard's not gonna hang over the top and it's not gonna hang over the bottom. It's gonna be about equal. So we'll just make a mark right there is where the tang is, top and bottom. Then we need to make sure that we mark which one's gonna be the top and which one's gonna be the bottom. So I'll just put a little X right there. This will be the top. So we will take the thickest portion right to, this is not rocket science guys, since I'm gonna file the end dimensions in right there. Okay, so we're gonna take our large end mill and we're gonna mill the large end mill slot here. Then we'll switch over to the small end mill and we'll mill this slot here. And then we'll ha what'll happen is I'll have a large slot and a small slot and then I'll take a file and I'll hand file in a taper from the tip to where the large slot starts. And then I should have the effective hole that I need to slide this on with some minimal fitment. Here's the first end mill right here. We're gonna put that in there and mill the slot in the milling machine. We're ready to go. that right there. So we have a larger slot and a smaller slot. This is just smaller than the bottom of the bevel and this is just smaller than the top of the flat. Now what I'll do is I'll scribe a line from this point to here and I'll file a small wedge out on both sides to create the angle for the bevel and then we'll start trying to do dry fitment. Okay. Here we are, you can now see my line right here and this small piece of material, this wedge needs to come out and this wedge up here needs to come out. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna file that wedge out and then we'll start trying to do fitment.
All right, so this came out really nice. The fitment's good, but I did decide for the style of knife that I'm making, I want this to look more rustic rather than polished. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just a, a, uh, a light texturing all over the surface of this. Just a, a random texture pattern. I'm not gonna go real deep, just tapping around all over the surface. And then I'll buff it and change the coloring just slightly and kind of just make it look antique. And I've learned to go really light on the areas where the blade's going to go over the top because you really don't want to see under it. We're going to call it. Nice, good texturing. Let's see if we can't get in close there. That should do it. Let's see if sanding this before heat treat was beneficial. I have sanded this to 1200 grit now. We're going to go ahead and throw it in the etchant tank and see what happens. Man, look at that hamon. It really came out nice. It's got figure all over it. It's got a pattern. It's got character. You know, it just, it really came out awesome. Where, everywhere I put clay on it, it, uh, it was super sweet. I'm trying not to give you a sneak peek of what's over here because this is super exciting. I've already finished this knife even though uh, you guys haven't seen the next episode. I'm gonna handle it in the next episode so I'm trying not to show you. Super cool. Loved it. Came out really nice. Uh, I did put wax on this, my Renaissance wax, so it's kind of got some smudges and some smears. Um, when, I, when I do the final on this I'll clean it all off so that you can see the the true nature of it, but that's just an incredible ghosted hamon. You can see right here where I'm talking about um, this edge right here where you could see where I did the rapid water quench. Right along the edge is the hardest part of the material that comes up about, oh, about an eighth of an inch, the full length of the edge where it got really hard and then it transitions into this uh, medium hardness area right here and then into the softer tang area. Um, yeah, I'll definitely do this again for sure. 1084 steel worked great. It's absolutely fantastic. That hamon, I love it. I absolutely dig it. If you guys have any suggestions for me, leave them down in the comments. What did I tell you? That hamon really popped out on this 1084 steel. That I really think doing the, the rapid water quench and then right into the oil was the trick. If you look really close, you could see a fine line right on the edge of where that's the absolute hardest material from that rapid water quench. And then I went right into the oil and the oil was able to infiltrate 
a little slower through that clay area and it kept the spine of the knife real nice and soft which is exactly what we were looking for um, the knife came out great the guard fitment is fantastic hopefully you enjoyed my tips and tricks on how to mill that guard instead of a, being just a, a standard slot it had some intricacies and things in there so i'm looking forward to showing you guys the third episode which i'm going to put right here um, and that is going to take you over to me putting a handle on this knife and just to tell you a little bit about that it's awesome guys wait till you see this handle i use some cool prehistoric materials so i'll see you guys on episode three